Hey guys, it's Ethan, and today we have the BenQ XL 2420T review. It's a little overdue, but <clears throat> deal with it. So here, um, basically the first thing you're going to see is it comes with a PVC cover. Um, we're going to take this off. It's pretty good for traveling. I like it. I've traveled to a couple friends' house with this monitor. I let them borrow it for a week or so, see how they like it, see what kind of features they use and whatnot. So... Take that off, you get your 24 inch screen. It's full 1080p, so it's 1920 by 1080. Uh, you also get 120 hertz uh, input frame rate. So it's not fake 120, it's real 120, and you can only get 120 at native resolution with the display port or with dual link DVI. Your VGA and your HDMI are both limited to 120 hertz at 1024 by 768 or lower. You will not get native 120 hertz with HDMI. So that's just getting that out there now. Don't ask her a question about it because I'm not going to answer it. So on the side here, you have one, two, three, four, five capacitive buttons for your on-screen display and a power button down here. Um, on the left here, you have your S switch, which is convenient for changing profiles and setting up things in the on-screen display. Um, after I set my things up, I really didn't use the S-Switch that much, but it's pretty nice to have when you're setting things up. You also have your height adjustment, which goes pretty high, right? You have tilt adjustment, which tilts pretty, pretty good amount. You have, I guess that would be pivot, or swivel, I should say. Swivel's pretty good. And then you have your pivot, which... Is like that. Why you'd ever want to use that, I'm not sure. I guess for like a multi monitor setup. But I don't use multi monitor setup, so let me go ahead and put that back. And it's easy to do all this, but I'm doing it with one hand, so it makes it a little more difficult. Um, let's turn it around to the back. So I can give you a little bit of some of the features that are here. All right, make sure that's centered. All right, so basically you have your a headset stand here. You have a handle, so when you're traveling with it, it makes it very easy. You have a cable route, so when you're riding your cables through, you don't have them all on your desk uh, or scattered all over the place, I should say. So that's the back of it. This is a very sturdy stand. It's kind of heavy. It's a pretty heavy stand. Um, and along to the left-hand side of the monitor, that's in the shot there. Along the left hand side of the monitor you get two USBs and an audio out. The audio out is only for HDMI, there is no audio in. I would have liked to have seen audio in, but um, there is none, so that's only for HDMI. All right, let me go ahead and take this off here so I can show you the ports. One of these, there we go. All right, now let me see if I can get this in the camera here for you. All right, so here we have the power. Here we have the mini USB for the S-Switch. There we have DisplayPort, VGA, Dual Link DVI, two HDMIs, USB upstream, and a USB downstream. And then here you have a VESA wall mount, so you could wall mount it if you wanted to. I, I would not recommend wall mounting it because simply the stand is pretty phenomenal, but you could if you wanted to. So, and this is the quick switch or the quick lock guide to the, the stand. So as you saw me, it's very easy to take it off and put it on. So I think that's overall um, it for his physical design. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring you into the orange screen display now. Alright guys, I'm going to try to show you the orange screen display the best that I can. So bear with me, I'm using the S-Switch. Um, so let's see how this goes. I'm just going to show you the basics. I'm not going to go into detail about changing anything, but you'll get the gist. So basically you have three things that you can choose from to change. So right now I have picture mode. 
Uh, let's see if we can get the camera a little bit closer. It's going to be about as close as I'm going to be able to get it, guys. All right. So here we have picture mode, display mode, and smart scaling, which is grayed out because it's full 1080p right now. Um, the top three, you can actually change to the menu, but let's go through picture mode first. So here you can see we have game area one, two, three. They're the bottom ones. This is the one thing I don't like about the monitor is every time you change a mode, it automatically selects the mode. And then you have to select it again. It would have been just better if you could just scroll through them and then select the one that you want. I'm going to put her in normal. So bear with me as soon as I get there, eventually. All right, so I'm putting her in standard mode now. Select it. And then here we have display mode. This is where you can pick your aspect ratio. So we have full, we have aspect one to one, which is grayed out. We have 17, which is a four to three. Then we have a 19, which is four to three. Then we have 16 wide, which is 16 to 10, 21 five, which is 16 by nine. We have 22 wide, which is 16 by 10. There's a couple more. Then we have 23 wide, which is 16 by nine. I personally play at uh, full, so we're going to get back out of here. Smart scaling is where you can basically uh, scale the screen to a certain percentage of whatever you want. I can't display that right now because basically I'm in full 1080p right now. I will go into a game that I'll show that to you. So here we have the menu. You have the display, which you can do adjust auto adjustment, H position, V position, pixel clock, and phase. You can only change those on gamer settings. Here we have picture, which is brightness, contrast, sharpness, black, equalizer, gamma, color, temperature, hue, saturation, reset color, AMA, and instant mode. AMA will reduce ghosting, and instant mode will reduce input latency. Picture advanced, we have picture mode, sensei, sense eye demo, dynamic contrast, overscan, display mode, smart scaling, color format, HDMI, RGB, PC range, and smart focus. Smart Focus basically just puts a uh, uh, makes the rest of the screen darker, and you can choose which portion of the screen will be brighter. And then you have your save settings. You can only save three settings at a time, so you can put those towards Gamer 1, Gamer 2, or Gamer 3. Then you have audio, which is volume, mute, or buzzer. The buzzer is the annoying thing that you hear every time I make a command. I just never bothered to change it. Here's your system. You can change your input. So here we can see we have... Uh, VGA input, a DVI, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and DisplayPort. You can change your OSD settings like language, display time, OSD lock, custom key 1. That's the one that you uh, you can see here, here, and here. So for custom key 1, I have picture mode. Custom key 2, I have display mode. Custom key 3, I have smart scaling. You have auto power off, which I absolutely hate, so I keep that off. Uh, but you can change it in 10, 20, or 30 minutes. Uh, DDC, CI, that's basically the controlling of the monitor through the DVI. I keep that on, so I believe you need that on if you install custom profiles, so just keep that on. HDMI auto switch, I don't have any HDMI things besides an Xbox 360. When I did have it though, I did turn HDMI auto switch on, so when I powered on the Xbox, it automatically switched uh, inputs. Then we have resolution notice, which I actually usually have off that basically tells you when you're not native 1080p 120 hertz it lets you know that you're not that so here we have information which we can tell uh, what resolution we're running at which you can see 1920 by 1080 and then you can see 120 um, it gives you the model number and which input you're running at and then you can reset all I don't want to do that so that's the orange screen display let's run into uh, let me open up a game which for this demonstration purpose, I'm just going to load up Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And I'm going to bring the camera back a little bit. Alright, so that should be good enough for the full screen. Uh, let's go ahead and go offline. All right, go ahead, no bots. Alright, this I just want to show you the scaling, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, I've been playing Counter-Strike since basically around 1999-2000, so I'm kind of stuck on the low resolution, 
So I always play, no matter what game I play, I always put on 640 by 480 for whatever reason. It's just like branded in my brain that I do that. So one of the great things about this monitor is it lets you scale on any resolution. So let me go ahead and here's the game. Uh, so here's the game and basically so right now we have full aspects. So this is 640 by 480 pixels, but it's taking up the entire screen. I usually don't play like that. I usually play aspect, which then cuts it down to what 640 by 480 should be. And then one to one will make it so out of the uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels that are on here, it's only showing you 640 by 480 of those. And then you can just scale to 17 inch monitor, 19 inch monitor, 19 inch wide, 21.5 wide, 22 wide, and then 23 wide. Um, but like I said, I usually keep it on aspect. So I'm going to keep it on aspect here. Um, I'm not quite sure why smart scaling is not popping up here. Let's go with full. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why smart scaling is not showing up. But basically smart scaling, well, I think smart scaling might... Oh, Sorry about that, the camera. I think smart scaling might not work on 640 by 480. Let me try to change the resolution to something a little more not so severe. All right. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why that's not popping up. Let's go with one to one and see what happens. There it goes. So your smart scaling is you're gonna be basically able to scale it up percentage wise. So you can see how it's getting bigger right now. So say you wanted it at like, it's gonna keep on going because I just scroll like a million times. So you can scroll all the way up to 100%. Um, that's basically aspect mode. So uh, sort of a moot feature in my opinion, but it's there, it's great there for people who are extremely stuck into um, the old mono they used to run. And I'm you can see that like, no matter how fast or slow I move the mouse, there's really no ghosting, okay? Um, even when looking at dark places like Train. So you can see that there's really no ghosting at all, which is phenomenal because when you're playing FPS games, you really don't want have any ghosting. I can't notice any input latency. Um, there's a few reviews that say they can feel the input latency. Um, I personally can't feel it. I think I think uh, one of the review guys said that there's around a 5 millisecond input latency, which is about on par. It's about as low as you're going to possibly get for a monitor. Anything lower than that is through overdrive, uh, which this does. So you will get as low as a 2 millisecond input latency, but it won't be average 2 millisecond input latency. Also, this uh, bomb train outside is ridiculous. They should absolutely remove that. But that's a different story. Um, let's see if I can go over some of the picture modes. So here we have standard. Uh, here we go to movie. Here we go to uh, photo. There we go to sRGB. Eco, which is a little bit darker. And then we have Heaton. I downloaded Heaton's profile. This is pretty bright and washed out. Then we have SPS2, RTS, and then we have Gamer1, Gamer2, and Gamer3, which those are basically my preset ones. I always just use standard because I actually grabbed a calibrated file from one of the review sites that reviewed the monitor, and the colors are actually pretty phenomenal. Outside the box, they're not too great, but if you if you grab if you Google like calibration for uh, XL twenty four twenty T, you'll get a pretty good idea of what the color should look like, and they're pretty phenomenal. Um, also, the keyboard that you saw in the picture was the Steel Series six GB two. The mouse I'm using is the Steel Series Sensei Raw, so hopefully there'll be no questions on that. Uh, right now, I'm using the input through DVI Dual Link. So uh, there's that. Let me see if I can pull up uh, a video file. 
so I can show you uh, the kind of picture quality you'll be getting. I don't know if I have any full 1080p videos on my computer. Uh, documents, videos, no, I don't have any. Let's try downloads, not documents, go back. Um, I really don't think I have any full 1080p videos to show. Awkward, gamer, which is 720. I guess I could do this. This is 720p, so it's not quite the full resolution, but you'll get a pretty good idea. So here you can see that there's there's really no artifacting in the dark colors. Uh, there's there's a little tiny bit, but that's going to be because of the bitrate of the movie. It's not that big of a bitrate. If I had a full 1080p like Blu-ray rip, you would see absolutely no artifacting in the darker areas of here. And here you can see that along the bottom there's really no uh, backlight bleeding, and along the top there's really no backlight bleeding too. So it's a pretty good monitor. Uh, the one that I got has pretty much no backlight bleeding. Uh, I have heard some stories about some people getting bad at backlight bleeding, but I haven't seen it for myself. So I, I mean, there's basically nothing else that I can really go over with. Uh, so, oops. So I think that's going to be it. So it's, it's an absolutely phenomenal monitor. If you play games, this is definitely the monitor that you want to get, hands down. Um, it's the best 120 hertz monitor I've used, and I've used basically all of them. So I highly recommend this monitor for sure. And if you guys have any questions, uh, absolutely message me, and I will answer them for you. If you want me to try a specific resolution um, with a specific input, I will do that, and I'll try my best to do that. Um, so definitely check out Ben Q's website, and definitely check out the written review at fragboss.com. And thanks again for watching, guys.